United States President Donald Trump had a, a busy week. Uh, it began with his former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn pleading guilty to lying to the FBI, and he will now cooperate with uh, uh, Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller's uh, investigation into uh, potential uh, uh, Russian uh, collusion with the Trump campaign. Uh, now, uh, again, like the uh, Trump's enemies think that, you know, this is the smoking gun to, you know, bring him down. But so far, we've never seen any concrete evidence, evidence that, you know, the Trump campaign colluded uh, with, with Russia uh, during the election. It more seems that, you know, Mueller, he's trying to, you know, pick off, um, you know, tr uh, Trump's uh, allies to see if he can get them to to dish the dirt on them. But, you know, so far, uh, so far, it just seems like, you know, he's finding, you know, dodgy things that, you know, Michael Flynn has done and also his uh, former campaign manager, Paul Manafort. But yeah, it just seems to be like, this is, you know, uh, it's, it's not going anywhere. Like, obviously the media laps this up, but, you know, it's, you know, Flynn may have turned, but, you know, let's see what he comes up with. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think there's a lot of people out there that can't really accept uh, election results and they um, just want to uh, find any excuse to, to be able to remove somebody that has been elected. So um, they'll, they'll continue uh, digging at him um, and it doesn't seem to really have affected him that much as, as of yet. Um, whether they find anything is, um, is something to, to, to look out for. But uh, I think it's just um, really the the sore loser kind of mentality of many people that can't accept results. I mean, um, and this is why they keep on trying to find things to, um, to be able to uh, criticize and uh, therefore remove him on. And, but he had a big victory this week, uh, Trump with his, uh, uh, travel ban on seven Muslim majority countries being upheld by the U S uh, Supreme Court. Now, this follows uh, months of it being uh, thwarted since it was enacted back in January by activist judges in the, the federal court, because we have to remember, you know, eight years under Obama, he appointed all these you know, liberal uh, justices to the, the federal courts in the United States. But the Supreme Court is still majority conservative. Um, so mm. he, you know, eventually has won this issue, but there's still a whole bunch of other parts of the travel ban which are still caught up in these federal courts. But uh, eventually he will get, uh, you know, the travel ban uh, in its uh, entire, entirely, even though it has been revised several times, you know, approved by the Supreme Court, which is a huge victory, uh, you know, and allows him to fulfill his election commitment to, you know, strengthen uh, US border control, not just, you know, south of the border, but, you know, uh, what's coming in on planes as well. Yeah, it's, it's a good idea to be able to um, keep an eye on um, countries that don't obviously... Uh... Um, share the same values and that um, many of the flock in the countries um, that um, many of those people don't come to then try and change your country according to their lifestyles that are different to yours in the first place. Now, um, when I look at the actual countries involved, um, there's uh, Chad, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Syria and Yemen. Um, now, there is still a lot of countries, obviously, um, that haven't been um, named, like Saudi Arabia, for instance, um, that has a lot of uh, extremism. Um, Iraq hasn't been mentioned as, a, as another country. So there, there has been um, a selection of countries, um, for instance, such as um, um, Chad and Libya, that haven't really had a great deal of, um, of threats from, but are in the list. So um, I... I I don't know why exactly um, particular countries were chosen and others weren't. I mean, um, there might be some theories out there as to why that is the case, but um, there are some countries that haven't been mentioned that would have been uh, ideal to, to add to the list, but just haven't been there. And obviously Trump's uh, biggest uh, announcement of the week was that he was moving the United States Embassy uh, in Israel from uh, Tel Aviv to the city of mm. Jerusalem. Now, this is 
uh, provoked uh, unrest in, in the Middle East. There's been uh, riots that's also been condemned by nations such as uh, Turkey and Russia and also by uh, the European Union. Now, uh, you know, this has been lauded by, uh, you know, tr uh, Trump's uh, supporters and many conservatives because it, you know, is... Uh, it is, you know, recognizing that, you know, Jerusalem, you know, is the uh, capital of uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. but, it, but it's basically a form of, you know, virtue signaling, which is really on a practical level, you know, unnecessary. I mean, you know, uh, and I'm the last person to, um, you know, argue, uh, you know, don't offend Muslims or they'll attack us. But, you know, why, why you know, yeah, does it like for practicality reasons, like, the, you know, Israeli embassy in uh, Tel Aviv has been working quite well. I mean, um, you know, f does it really have to go to Jerusalem? Because previous presidents had always promised this, but, you know, never followed through with it because they didn't feel it was necessary. Well, it just seems like you uh, mentioned um, to be something that was unnecessary and, um, and, and really had no gain um, to, well, nothing to gain from it. It just... Uh, I mean, it's um, it's one of those things that um, it was used it was used to um, become a, um, um, a a talking point or, or something that um, um, like a virtue a signal that they like like you said and um, what really um, happens now is you're getting more uh, instability because of it because um, I mean Jerusalem um, historically um, has. Um, had a lot of Palestinians that have always been in the area and there's, there's always been um, uh, conflicts, of course, um, between different groups. But um, for them to, um, to, to move, it, which was a, a move that really doesn't do anything um, to, um, for, for, the, for the benefit of the, the region, all it does is um, uh, creates more infighting amongst different groups and, um, and really just uh, gives uh, more power um, to Israel, which um, in turn, you know, too much power to, to, to one group um, might uh, have consequences because it's really a stability in the region that you need. And you need uh, all uh, Middle Eastern countries to, to be able to get along and to be able to um, live alongside each other. And, um, and uh, moves like this um, really uh, threaten uh, relations with other um, countries nearby. And it's interesting to note that Australia is uh, not following the United States on this. Our uh, embassy is also in Tel Aviv and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, will not be moving to Jerusalem, which, uh, you know, even though successive Australian go governments have been, you know, pro-Israel, um, um, you know, uh, pro uh, probably Bob Hawke was our most uh, pro-Israeli pri uh, prime minister, they mm -hmm. you know, understand the, you know, the practicalities uh, of this and, you know, believe that, uh, you know, because, you know, we, uh, like most, pe uh, most people say, you know, we want a, you know, two state solution between, mm -hmm. uh, Israel, uh, you know, Palestine. And, you know, if you're, mm -hmm. you know, going to, you know, achieve that, you have to be, you know, you, you have to, you know, obviously, you know, better f take steps, you know, not to, you know, provoke, uh, tensions. Mm, yes, and um, I think a two-state solution will end up uh, occurring, um, just a matter of when rather than if. I think it's um, definitely going to be happening within the um, the coming years. The the, the biggest, um, I guess you could say, um, issue to raise is where the borders are going to be, see? So um, a lot of people uh, mention that Jerusalem is going to be split into two and you're going to have like an East Jerusalem and a West Jerusalem, so you're going to have both uh, countries sharing parts of the the, the city, um, which is a possibility, um, most likely to happen. And, um, I mean, where do the borders lie? Because over many, many years, the borders have continued to change between the countries. And um, um, Israel have built a lot more settlements and increased um, their areas. Um, the Palestinians have lost a lot of ground and um, their area is only really tiny. So um, whether they uh, rely on the um, the uh, the borders of... Um, a lot of uh, leaders mentioned the borders of 1967. Now, um, if, if they mention the borders of the 60s, um, we'd definitely be looking at a different um, di different situation than we are now because um, at current time, uh, there's been a lot of changes since then. 
So where the borders lie is, is going to be interesting when they do divide it up into the two-state solution. And uh, that will be something that we'll have to wait and see how it works. But moves like this, just, just there's no practicality in it. It's just um, going to cause tension. And the, the last thing we need is more wars. And, um, you know, I mean, we're only going to be sending more troops over there and uh, fighting battles that really aren't, aren't necessary. Yeah, so... <laughs> This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.